Esports, who is going to come out on top as they have brought very distinct, different type of play style in the way that they drafted and comp their composition wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, if they want to be playing for the later stages of the game, that's absolutely something that Echo can do. However, as we saw in our previous matchup of RRQ Akira up against the Valley, that Claude can make all the difference, including that Benedetta with a Petrify. So let's jump right into it. The Land of Dawn awaits us here, as one of these teams are going to be walking away feeling real good about themselves. Is it going to be from the Philippines or Indonesia? Take your votes and your guest coins out now. Let's go. <laughs> Coming into this first game here between two of the giants of their particular regions, we see that Benny Cutie is actually going to start off with helping out Carl Teasy in that buff, and therefore he is going to be able to rotate quite faster than Albert. Whoa, 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 what's going on up on the top side here? We see, we see the Kufra actually looking for it, and he hits it. Yeah, he's going to find Skylar here, but yeah. BMI's out. Should be fine. Vin now there to help him too. So, And this is the thing, right? Where do you park these roamers, JP and Vin? The, to get the most of value out of it, right? Because at the same time, XP lane, that Benedetta Yuzhong matchup, that's going to be more so uh, interesting how they develop into these objectives, right? Especially the first turtle and where that first kill can be. And it could be up here. And that's the focus, but it's whoa, Lemon, whoa. though. Sanji forcing the flicker out. Oh. He flickers in. Sanji with the first blood. I mean, you could see even from the beginning of the game that Sanji was really pressuring Lemon there in the mid side. Lemon is known to play really aggressively, and this time around, it actually put his team in a disadvantage. Yeah, this is great for Sanji as well. I mean, he's already got the mystery shop, so he's going to be accelerating even faster. Uh, luckily, at the very least, Lemon only loses a bit, but now the catch comes through. Oh, that's going to be tough, but they do get the flicker out from Vin, so that's a nice pickup, right? Because he doesn't have the Divine Judgment just yet, but still, with that being down, this should make it a little bit easier to grab or at least contest that first turtle. Right now, Albert already going into that bottom side, looking for the pressure because the turtle is going to spawn in under five seconds, and that's exactly what they want to be. They want to set up first, and even in the top lane, it seems like Skylar might be having a little bit of a hard time with the early game damage that Carrie has. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all about, like, the timings, right? Level two is when Carrie starts to get really, really good, but now they've already locked down Albert. Let's see how it goes. Okay, they're going to force this one. Turtle still going to be focused. One retribution comes out, but it's focused by Carl Teasy able to secure it. And now they're still going to be focusing on the target as Albert falls here. So it's a turtle and a kill for Echo. 100% worth it for Echo there. I think RRQ Oshi, they went a little bit too aggressive. They did set up first, but unfortunately, the, at least they couldn't have gotten a trade because Albert missed his retribution. Yeah, but it's one of the, hey, it happens. It happens, but for now, Echo is going to be in the lead, and they're going to take their time with this. This is going to be a very slow roll, considering the composition overall. 1,000 gold, though. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Guys, Relax. The table didn't do anything to you, Eterna. Gold. <laughs> don't, Echo. don't abuse the table. The I'm table sorry, didn't I'm do sorry, it. I'm sorry. I'm getting very passionate about this game. <laughs> but yes, Echo is leading with 1,000. You can already see that Benny QT has secured that corrosive scythe. So all these items are starting to come into play, and that might be bad for Skylar here in the top lane. Honestly, yeah. it's quite interesting that JP is hovering around the top side yeah. so much. I mean... Uh, that's the best case scenario for them. You really want to just park there. If you can find a pickoff, this is something that we were talking about previously uh, in the backstage is where does Kufra fit in now? It's high risk, high reward. Oh! And that's going to be the right target as they find Vin, forcing the flicker out. No one's going to go down just yet, though. Carl TZ now looking to back everybody out. There's probably not going to be anything committed just yet, but still, JP going to charge up. Do they go in on this top side? But for now, disengage. Yeah, they have to. 25 more seconds until the turtle comes back up. I mean, the proxy uh, the proxy of the waves started by R7. They don't want that to go to waste, but he's not going to get caught here, right? No, definitely. He's R7. He's got a brand to keep. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Still sweating here. 1,400 gold lead. Eight seconds left on the clock. But you can see Fredrin already. Seems like Echo, Fredrin, they all have that better space on, and they have the better setup for now. Either Ara Kihoshi, they're not going to contest this. They're going to look for something else. 
or they have to find the proper setup here. Yeah, they're going to have to rely on Vin, but the Black Dragon form does come out to Sanford. Albert looking to try to get the turtle. Oh. He does. What a retribution as he's able to secure it. And now Sanford caught in the back line. Carl TZ, though, to help him out. It's R7 on the hunt here. Gets the Petrify off. Can he get the kill? He's bobbing, he's weaving. Oh. He's slashing. Still, oh, no. though, it's Carl TZ that falls. And that's going to be a... Actually, R7 survives it. Oh, wait, no, oh. no. Okay, he okay, does. he does. He gets away with one HP, Oh, my Grandma. goodness. I was about to throw up there. Literally about to throw up, and I could definitely see it in Turner's face. If that appraisal's wrath <laughs> went through... Yeah, it was close, man. Very different story. However, I will say that RQ, their win conditions in a 4v4 comes down to whether or not Vin is able to find that pick. Oh, no. JP. Hold up. Again, Skylar, will he be? He actually doesn't even need to use the BMI, but now Sanji up here too. Vin gonna have to back off, does not have the Divine Judgment. Lemon though gonna take the real world <laughs> manipulation back and now forces them to disengage. It's a cat and mouse game here in the top side. It does not end, it really does not end. Both sides not trying to not give each other that space and I think RQ need to unlock Skylar from this goal lane. These are strong 5v5, but 4v4, it's really, really awkward when you don't have that damage and you're depending on R7 and Lemon, who are, especially with the heroes that they're using, aren't known to 100 to 0 people this early on in the game. You gotta say, though, like, Skylar, as much as focus has been put on him from Echo, he's doing a great job. He hasn't died, right? And he does have that Purify able to help him out here, but still, so far, with as much attention as being put up there, this is best case scenario for Skylar. He's still able to farm up, do at least decently well in that lane and then hopefully transitions later on. Again, Vin really hasn't had the opportunity either to find the divine judgment he's looking for. So this could be it. Conceal play gonna come out. Oh. Flicker comes in. They find Carl TZ. That's gonna be a kill under the turret. Looking for another. But JP gonna charge up and not commit. The turtle has spawned though. So now does RQ look to take the turtle here with Carl TZ down. Doesn't seem like they want to. They have a mad advantage though, so it should favor them in particular. But look at Benny Cutie. He is so focused on those objectives. He's gonna get a uh, tower in the oh. top side. But oh my god, Albert! They're gonna find Albert here. Quite a few combinations coming out. Albert gonna fall, but look at the damage from the Electo final blow! R7 gets Sanford. It's Skylar that grabs the kill. Benny Cutie on the backside. He's in misplaced. Oh. Benny Cutie though with a play before he goes down he's one hit away wait benny cutie survives oh two for two for now but that was beautifully done by echo okay they did have a lot of casualties but they are going to be able to force and push rrq off this next turtle and even perhaps take it for themselves the pressure, the pressure is on. Did Woo, Benny Cutie just turtle. first item wind of nature to survive that with one HP? We're gonna have to check the items in a little bit. There's just so much action happening across the map. It's hard to keep up with it this time. I mean, there you go, items. Oh my goodness, wait, having a he look. Has it. Yeah, he has it, second he item already side. gone, yeah. but he had the corrosive side, which is which is actually really important here because if, if he did not have that corrosive side, Skylar would have easily just walked away from the fight. Man, that is such a uh, clutch moment to have that too. And just the way that all played out again, Benny Cutie able to grab that early kill does set him up here, but Skylar still, right? He's managed to grab two himself. So those marksmen, those gold lanes are really gonna pop off as we get into the further port of the, the mid to late game here. Oh, I, I will say that Skylar has a bit of an advantage with the golden staff, but until we see the man, the myth, the legend, Benny QT, get one for himself. That's when he's really going to show his stuff here. Oh, oh Vin no. is just waiting to see if they can. Both real world middle ages come down. But look at the damage from Sanji. Able to grab a kill. Lemon falls. Carl Teasy on the backside, though. Now on the hunt for Skylar. Pokes him a little bit, but not able to commit. The taunts there. Vince could be in trouble here. JP. They're going to. He's actually going to survive. So oh. doesn't have that follow up they needed there. No. Two of the members from RRK Hoshi, they weren't focused on that. They were trying to get objectives in the top and the mid lane. But now RRQ Albert, he could be in trouble as Echo once again getting another tower in that bottom side. Again, the slow roll. This is yep. what I was talking about. As soon as Echo was able to actually get that lead, they're going to slowly start bleeding RRQ out until they have no more resources left. And it's going to be highly dependent on Skylar to try and get to that game. But the later stages, yeah, look Whoa. at this. R7, again, I'm not even worried. Look at the classic just going at it. An absolute OG, naturally with his own mechanics, gets out of the situation. But yes, Echo is playing for late, and that's where we have to keep our eyes out for. 
But even then, Sanji's already popping off with that damage. I mean, he doesn't even have any damage items per se, right? He has the frozen... The ice, ice cream one, and he also has the enchanted talisman, so yeah. more cooldown, more to utility. But even then, the damage already felt, and even Lemon was taken out before that. So very well played by Echo in terms of that team fight, as now both teams are going to start centering and focusing on the next objective, and that is going to be the first Lord. Well, I don't want to be that guy that said, uh, you know, Lemon's taking all that damage and died, but that was kind of on him <laughs> for the most yeah. part. <laughs> Well, I mean, either way, both teams here in a good position for this first Lord. I think it's just going to be juggled around a little bit as both teams do the Lord dance, as we've seen many times before. But still, uh, there's the Golden Staff pickup for Benny Cutie here. So Ooh. if they can, if he can get in that range that he needs to be, this could be a very bad position for RQ to fight in. I agree, I agree. But on the flip side here, we can see R7 already clearing that top side, putting a little bit of pressure. As here, JP oh. misses his ult. JP's going to miss that, but Albert... Poked a little bit here. Black Dragon Form gonna come. Who does secure the Lord? It's gonna be Carl TZ with the Retribution. But on the back side they go. Electo final blow. It's R7 that falls. Benny Cutie though. And Sanji. Two down for RRQ. Carl TZ still in the chase to push him out. And now the eyes are set on the tier one. It looks tough here. I mean, the fact is, Echo is playing as a five-man unit. RRQ just a one man, just a little bit late to the party. And even Skylar just struggling to find the opening to get into that middle, get into the middle of the fight. So they're just cutting their losses for now. Oh my god, the pressure coming in from Echo. Now they're focusing on the mid side. They're trying to clear the waves as fast as they can because they have a Lord to cover here on the bottom side. Kyle is going to take away that red buff as well. This is looking quite chaotic for RQ. Oh, Albert going to get caught here in a bad position. He's going to heavy spin, try to get out of there, pushing uh -huh. Carl TZ into the turret, able to grab a kill himself. Albert with a pickup. They lose that turret though. Does Echo press the situation here? JP gonna jump in, finding Albert. Rear World Manipulation gonna come down from Lemon, forcing Echo back a little bit here. Black Dragon form committed. It's Albert one hit away as he goes Lemon down up. from Benny Cutie. No Lemon way. falls too. JP into the deep of the base, but R7 with no. a massive play. Electo final blow committed no. as three fall for Echo. Oh my god. Oh. What was that sound, Gideon? <laughs> what a fu I mean, there's just so many moments. Gideon and, and, sounds. And it's still, <laughs> sorry, it's just, it's just the ad libs at this point. But like Benny QT, when you see somebody get to that level of attack speed, you don't get to see, you don't get to see people survive it that no, no, often. No. I mean, just look at this. Albert, he dies. You're expecting that. Lemon dashes one time forward, oh. takes 12 auto attacks, and dies instantly. And look at this, Vin also taking so much damage, but this is the masterpiece. R7 able to deal out so much damage there in the bot side, and even by enough time for Arki Hoshi to kind of recalibrate themselves into this next part. But we're going to take a little look into the items first. Uh -huh. Looking at R7 right now, he's currently three items. I think, he's, I think he's building into a Malefic Roar for his fourth. Looking at Skylar, he's in a good position with three items in and of itself. But if we're looking at supports, that's the big difference here. Because with the supports, they're building as tanky as possible. But the immortality makes all the difference for a Kufra. Yeah, I, I mean, I got to say, the question about Kufra you know, where does he fit so far? Because he's kind of, in a way, that hero has fallen off a little bit. But so far, JP's doing an amazing job at really finding the setups that he needs to, utilizing the Kufra here. Especially, I mean, with Sanji setting up those perfect real world manipulations so far, Lemon's doing it too. But the thing is, I haven't seen Vin just yet exactly find the mark he does. He has the seven assists. He's finding targets. But if he can cancel out Sanji, that's going to be a huge play for RQ. Oh! Oh, no. Okay, that's a good disengage. Ooh. Nobody yeah. is going to, you know, bite the bullet for now. And I think our RQ also understands, like, yeah, we're slightly behind, but it's not the end of the world. Ah, sure, you want to have Lord? Fine, we can defend against it. Their high ground should be enough for this. Oh, they and they oh. don't have the real one manipulation, but a flicker for a flicker comes out. The blazing duet from Skylar, but Vin could be in a bad position. R7, though, keep an eye on him. Looking for an angle here. Electo final blow with the Petrify going to come out. He gets canceled a little bit here. Sanford still oh. up. R7 gonna fall to Sanji and he's still going as Lemon gonna be the next target able to survive but they might chase him down he slowed oh. with the flicker in from Sanji to clean up oh. my god three for zero trade Echo gets the Lord 
this couldn't be a worse game for our Argy Hoshi at this point. You saw that R7 was trying to do his best the way that he does it, right? That's so signature R7. Mm -hmm. Which, whatever hero he chooses, whether it be the Benedetta, the Cho, he tries to look in for that flank, but unfortunately, the follow-up damage from the other members are not there. And here we go, the Siege from Echo. Gonna be a full four Siege here from Echo here. One more turret to go up. On the top side, they've got to handle this Lord. Echo setting their sights on the bottom side. Carl TZ already handling that wave. Can RQ defend here and keep in this game? Echo now full force bottom side. Sanford comes in with the Black Dragon form. RQ looking for any angle, but Echo calls the back signal. Value. Just cash money all the way through. They've got they've gotten a 7.7k lead for themselves. They don't need to go any further. No Lord empowered minions. No Lord in and uh, no Lord as well. So they just back off. They don't need to do any more than this. They know that they they're getting really oh. close to the end game. Oh my god. Well, they're gonna focus on R7. I don't think he was expecting that death bush either. Oh, that's so cheesy. It always works. It works every single time. Everybody forgets about the bottom and top brush. And this time, R7 has to pay the price. Right now, when you when we're talking about this Kufra, there is, I mean, previous uh, in previous metas, we have seen Kufra play into the Kaja because it doesn't allow Kaja to get away after the Divine Judgment. Oh, man. Echo looking to end the game here as both real world motivations come down across from each other. Lemon and Sanji, still no commitment yet on that crystal from Echo. Anybody else getting bombing run vibes just to be like, <laughs> just to show dominance is like, yeah, I can, I, I can mess with you too. I can tap faster. Man, I can tap faster. thousand gold lead for Echo up until this point and the damage dealt is mostly coming in from Sanji. So that's why I love the Geeve in this current meta. I love it because you don't have to build too much damage. You can build for utility. You can build something like the brute force breastplate, but still have as much damage as all the other members. Well, I mean, it depends on it depends on the person. I'm more of a farsa kind of guy. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, I, I I like both. I'll, but you know, Gord number one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, going back yes. to it, did you see the discrepancy on the damage dealt? Right. Mm -hmm. You typically when you see that Valentina picked up against a Eve, you kind of expect them to be in the same ballpark. But it was a huge difference, and that's just the fact that Lemon hasn't been able to get in range to even take that ultimate or use it the way he wants to. And that is also a be hard because of the fact that they have Sanford, right? Yeah. That was a the problem. They picked up Sanford, so even if the Valentina wanted to take the real-world manipulation, it could be a little bit more difficult because of the damage input that he's taking from Sanford himself. And on that note as well, that's the thing about Lemon, dude. That's what caught me a little bit surprised because Lemon's great when he gets it. He's like a double-edged sword for RRQ. When he plays great, he plays great, but if not, Look at his KDA. Look, zero five five. You everybody has their day, right? Knowing Lemon and seeing his career over many many seasons and many many M series. Oh god. R7's oh dead. man, R seven gonna just be deleted once again. Death Bush, but this time in the mid lane, Sanford forcing everybody back. The Black Dragon form, and just like that, Echo grabs himself another Lord. Oh, that's so brutal. This Kufra is just getting so much more value than I was, than I was expecting. I yeah. feel like now is the time to respect the Kufra. Prior to this, they should have absolutely <laughs> disrespected JP. Like, what was he really going to do? And the fact that they did have R7 on Benedetta, maybe they could have made some play towards the mid lane like Takashi did against the Valley. So that's what I'm hoping to see. But right now, Echo, they've got all the marbles in their court, and they're just going to slowly lob them down one by one until this crystal breaks. Look at JP charging up once again. Not going to commit to that, though. Lord here in the middle lane of the base of RRQ. They're going to set it up. Lemon with the real world manipulation. JP going to go in, finds a couple targets, but has to get out of dodge as well. It's Albert, Albert taking the brunt of oh, damage. It's R7 that falls God. again, though. Echo still pressing the situation here, looking to end the game as Vin falls and they find another. Benny Cutie free firing in the backside, and now it's going to be the crystal worked on. Echo takes the game against RRQ. Clean, Woo! clean, clean from Echo from the Philippines. That was so beautiful to watch at the end. The damage coming in from that carry was just so terrifying. It was disgusting at that point. It is. You can literally see. You can literally see the light wheels just overlapping each other because there's so <laughs> many auto yeah. attacks. Sometimes are there's two in one. You never really know. But don't worry, RQ fans. One loss doesn't mean the end of the world. Nobody gets knocked down. Don't.